25 years to the day a Wichita Falls man went missing, a new cl uh, classification in the case by police gives a glimmer of hope to his family that answers may someday come. While not a breakthrough, there is now a determination that foul play was involved in Keith Mann's disappearance from Fountain Gate Apartments a quarter century ago. Jaron Spohr spoke with the family and police and shares what they had to say. May 10th, 1997. A Wichita Falls family's world turned upside down. When we woke up that morning, uh, we didn't think anything, you know, was going to be going wrong. But uh, as the afternoon went on, and Carrie came into town and called us and said she couldn't locate Keith, and we just started putting all the pieces together. There was a, a car from the dealership where he worked at was near our house, and um, we just kind of figured, oh. He must have just left it here for a reason, but he'll be back soon. You know, he knows he's coming over today, so everything will be fine. But we just kept waiting. Keith's stepmom, Deborah, and father, Greg, have continued to wait and wait for 25 years, which has made it hard to hold on to hope that they will one day see their son again. As the years go by, and it just it doesn't look like, you know, the case is that he's still alive, you know. We try not to lose our hope on that, but, um, you know, because we're Christians, you know, we, uh, that's helped us through. After countless hours of investigating, interviews, polygraph tests, Detective John Laughlin says in newly released information, they've been able to rule out several scenarios and have come to the conclusion Keith did not voluntarily go missing. When times passed, we were, there was always the hope held out that we would find Keith, that something had, had just occurred, maybe some kind of mental crisis that we were unaware of or undiagnosed and that he he just wandered off and we'd find him. But I think as I've worked on the case and reviewed the previous investigators case uh, work that they did, we're, we're to the point now that we do suspect that foul play was involved. With this new information, Laughlin thinks they are that much closer to being able to give the family answers. Having a, a laser focus on on this aspect of the investigation will certainly help develop any leads that may be there and follow up on them. So instead of being spread out and going in many different different directions, we'll be going in the same direction. And I think there are people in this, in this community or that were in this community at the time of Keith's disappearance that know. But until they finally have the answer to what happened to their son, the mans won't forget him and won't stop getting his story out there in hopes of someone coming forward. In order to find him, you have to. I feel that way. Uh, I'm not going to keep quiet about it until I do find my son. That was Jaron Spohr reporting. Last year, Jaron and Curtis Jackson did an in-depth report on Keith Mann's story for their Unraveling the Mystery series. If you'd like to watch that in full, just head over to our website and search Unraveling the Mystery. Now, this month, if your information leads to the location and positive DNA results of Mann, with Crime Stoppers board approval, you could earn up to $25,000. You can just call Crime Stoppers. Call Crime Stoppers at the number you see right there on your screen. Do that 24 hours a day. And remember, you never have to give your name.